Hello, I would like to introduce you in Power Electronics by showing you how to move a toy train by using a boost converter. So how does a toy train move and when does a toy train move? So a toy train needs a constant voltage. This voltage can be, for example, from a battery. The problem by using a battery is that the battery voltage is very slow and very small. So we need a higher voltage. This is why we need a boost converter. The boost converter can set a low input voltage to a higher output voltage. So if we do so, we can use this train. But if we have a constant voltage, we also have only a constant speed. So we need also a change in the output voltage, a higher output voltage, that we can have different speed. Both of these properties can solve the boost converter, which can change a low input voltage to a different kind of high output voltage. So let's take a look inside the boost converter. The boost converter can be described by this circuit. In the input side, we have the battery followed in by an inductor. The inductor can store energy, in this case, current. Then we have a switch. This is a common switch, you know, you can do it off and on. This is an electronic switch. We can switch the electronic switch, not by our hand, but by using an electronic signal. We will see it later. Furthermore, we have on the output side a diode. The function of the diode is to let current only from this side to this side, not from this to this. It's like a valve. On the output side, we have a capacitor. This capacitor stores energy. In this way, we can save current. So, but how does it work? No, we have an input voltage from the battery, a low input voltage, let's say we have 3 volt, and we want to have output voltage like 6 volt. So this circuit can be expressed in this equation. It is described by the input voltage divided by 1 minus D. So what is D? D is called duty cycle. The duty cycle describes the time when the switch is on, in on state, instead of off state. So, if we want to have 6 volt at the output side, we need to set D to 0 0.5. This means V in 3 volt divided by 1 minus 0 0.5 is 6 volt in the output side. So, see it here again. Here we have the expression of D. D can be described by the on state, so the time when the switch is on, divided by the time, the total time of the switch, which means the total time is the off time of the switch and the on time of the switch. So D describes T on divided by T. This is the factor. So if you want to set an input voltage, for example 5 volt to 10 volt, D must be 0 0.5. So this means 0 0.5 T on is the same as T off. 0 0.5. For example, 5 seconds. The switch is 5 seconds off and 5 seconds on. In this way, we can set 5 volt as the input voltage to a higher voltage like 10 volt. We could also set the duty cycle to 0 0.75. This would end in an output voltage of 20 volt instead of 10 volt. So we can see that we can change the input voltage, voltage to a higher output voltage. Also we can change the input voltage to different kind of output voltage. So we go back 
to our goals, we want to have a constant voltage, which is higher than the input voltage, and we want to have an output voltage we can change. So in this way, we can let the train drive, and we can change the speed of the train as well. So, all right. So we have the circuit, and we have this equation, but we don't know how it works. So let's take a look more deep inside the circuit. So as I already taught, we have the off state of the switch and the on state of the switch. So the circuit can be described in two modes. Mode one describes the circuit in the on mode when the switch is on, and mode two describes the circuit in the off mode when the switch is off. So here on this graph, we can see the, um, the signal, the electronic signal, we will send to the switch. So when this signal, which is our duty cycle, is on, the switch will be on. When it is off, the switch will be off. So you see, this is the same as this. Okay, so let's go to the mode. In on mode, when the switch is on, the circuit is closed in the middle, like here. So then we have uh, the input voltage across the inductor. The impedance of the inductor is very small, so this will cause a very high current. This current we can see in this graph during the on mode. Okay, let's go to the off mode. The off mode is described in mode 2. Here we can see that the input voltage is now not only on the across the inductor, it is also on the output. So this is why we have a smaller um, fall in the current because the output impedance is much more higher. So furthermore, in the off mode, um, we have another output voltage. We have not only the input voltage because of the inductor. As I told you at the beginning, the inductor can, sh can store energy. From the mode 1 to mode 2, the polarity of the inductor will change. In this case, we have two input voltages. For example, the in plus the voltage across the inductor will be the output voltage. So now you can understand how we can have a higher output voltage than the input voltage. Because by each step we switch, we add a small piece of the inductor voltage to the input voltage, which will be saved in the output inductor. So, okay, that's great. So we have an input voltage, we can set higher until the final point. But what is the point? Because otherwise the current would always increase. So on on one point, on one time, the current fall will be the same as the current rise because the output voltage will be higher and therefore together with the impedance will produce a current which will be the same as the current in the on mode. So when we reach this point the inductor current in the dotted line will be not rise it will be in the average constant. In this way, we have a constant output current and a constant output voltage, which is higher than the input voltage. Okay, so let's go from the theory to the practice. So here we have, instead of a battery, a constant voltage. So as in the example, we have an input voltage of 5 volt. This input voltage goes to the input of our boost converter. With this multimeter, we can measure the output voltage. So to check if we 
increased the input voltage to a higher level. So, but we also want to understand the theory a little bit more. So this is why we have these oscilloscopes. With these oscilloscope, we can see the duty cycle. And of course, we also have the toy train. So, let's check it first. We will set the constant duty cycle, which will affect the constant output voltage and the constant speed of the train. So let's see. Yeah. You see, the train has a constant speed. We set the input voltage to a higher output voltage, from 5 to 5.4 volts. And the duty cycle is 20.5%, this is 0 0.25. So, as we have seen in the theory, if we increase the duty cycle to a higher percentage, the output voltage should be also increased. So, let's change the duty cycle. We see that the on time of the duty cycle it's more long now. By doing this, we can say we can see that we have changed the input voltage of five volts to the output voltage of around ten volts. And of course, the duty cycle is more higher than before. And we can see that the train will move more fast. Now I will change the duty cycle constantly, which will be affect the speed of the train. From slow to very fast. So, as we have seen in the praxis and in the theory, we can change the low input voltage to a high output voltage by using a boost converter. Furthermore, by changing some properties of the boost converter, we can set the output voltage to different levels, which allows us to change the speed of the train. This is why we need a boost converter.